Some combinations are just magic. Fred and Ginger, Thelma and Louise, retinoids and niacinamide. And I feel that way about vitamin C and sunscreen. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam, and I have coached thousands of people to bright, clear skin in my Harley Street clinic. And I'm here today to support you on that journey too. So we now know pretty much for sure how powerful SPF is as a tool for photo aging prevention. And this was demonstrated in a big study in Queensland, Australia, in I think around 2013, where 903 people were registered into the trial and one arm was given sunscreen to use with explicit instructions how much and how often to reapply it. And the other group was given discretionary advice. Use it when you feel like it. And after a four and a half year period, which is massive in any clinical study, they saw that the group who had the explicit instructions had 24% less aging than the discretionary group. So we know that SPF works when it comes to preventing those signs of aging that we know wrinkles, sagging, um, dull texture, um, broken capillaries, and pigmentation. So those are the five hallmark signs of sun damage, prematurely aged skin. But is it the whole story? And the cats are clearly excited to find out if it is because they're making a racket. So it's not the whole story. And I think first we have to look at sunscreens themselves, which are designed to protect against UV rays. Now. SPF, as we know, relates to the UVB protection, which is the stuff we need when we're at the beach. In strong sunshine, we're outdoors. However, for aging prevention, what we need is UVA, and in particular, the long wave UVA rays, the UVA1 rays, which go deeper into the dermis and are causing all that havoc inadvertently. So not injuring the DNA directly like UVB rays, but they are having an impact that ultimately leads to those changes we don't like, loss of collagen, upregulation of the enzymes that break the collagen down, damage to our elastin, irregular hyperpigmentation, all that jazz. So it is the reason why the UVA protection in your sunscreen is probably the most important bit when it comes to the vanity side of things, all right? So it is why the protection that you're going to get from a moisturizer with SPF in or your foundation with SPF in is not likely to give you the same bang for your buck as a proper broad spectrum formulated sunscreen. So what I want you to look for, of course, is that UVA in a circle symbol that tells you you're getting at least this, a third of the level of UVB protection when it comes to UVA. Now in our sunscreens, you get 50%, you get more than that third. I thought it's so important because it's so key to preventing the changes associated with aging, but one third is certainly going to make a big impact. So that's regular sunscreen, that's UV protection. So what is it that the antioxidant factor in our vitamin C serum is offering us? Well, firstly, no one gets 100% protection from UV from sunscreen. It's almost impossible because we tend to underapply it. It comes off through the course of the day. You know, we're maybe not rigorous about topping up that second time, particularly if we go about our daily, you know, office work and we're popping out at lunchtime. Most of us aren't going to be in a position to easily reapply sunscreen without wrecking our cosmetics. So we're reliant on the second line of attack from an antioxidant serum like vitamin C, which has some of the best evidence behind it, because it's going to mop up any free radicals that get through your UV filters of your sunscreen. So I think of it as a kind of belt and braces approach to UV protection. However, UV is not the whole story. I mean, the, the picture just gets more and more complicated, doesn't it? But the thing is visible light, which forms a big part of the sun's radiation spectrum is also problematic because it turns out it also generates free radicals and can increase the production of the matrix metalloproteinases type 1 and 9, so that means less collagen um, because it's being chomped up by these enzymes, and it can also inhibit the production of new collagen, so the net net effect is less collagen and that means more wrinkles. So I think there's a big incentive to add vitamin C topically into a skincare regime devoted to photo aging prevention, especially when you consider that it's also helpful as an anti-inflammatory and in hyperpigmentation. 
And on the subject of hyperpigmentation, I think we should also mention the addition of iron oxide to our sunscreens, particularly in those with darker skin types, Fitzpatrick 3 through to 6, where visible light, and in particular the high energy blue light, is going to increase hyperpigmentation even further. And iron oxide is one of the few ingredients we have that can actually help combat that. And it's particularly helpful whether you have melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation for something like acne or indeed actinic lentigos. So I think it's really exciting that we now better understand all the different facets of the way the skin ages from an environmental perspective and how the tools we have at our disposal um, help us combat these changes and improve skin health and its appearance. And I think there's a big argument for including an antioxidant serum with vitamin C in it in combination with a well-balanced broad spectrum sunscreen, potentially with a tint, particularly if you have a darker skin tone, to really set your skin up for aging in the best possible way. So if you found today's video helpful, please hit like and subscribe so we know we're hitting the spot with you. And if you know someone who'd benefit from it, please share it and spread the word. Bye for now.